Hey everyone, so what have I got now? I've got a Honda Accord V6 and the car was at another shop. Uh, apparently got towed to them, it broke the timing belt. And it's got 120, 121,000 miles on it. Kind of odd for a 2010 to break the belt at, a, at 121,000. But okay, I can just go off of what I've been told. So supposedly it broke the belt and they had to pull the heads off and get valves replaced and stuff like that. So now the person gets the car back. It's got misfires to it, throws the check engine light. Brings it back to the shop. They do stuff to it, I have no idea what. Give it back to the customer, same thing. It's been back and forth to the same shop now, I think six times, and the other shop has not been able to figure it out. So let me show you what my scanner is showing me. So, oops, turn that off. So here we go. We got cylinder four, five, and six, and then a random misfire detected. Now four, five, and six is the left bank of the motor, which on this, because the timing belt is towards the passenger side, the left bank of the motor is towards the radiator. Uh, four, five, and six, you know, being all one bank is kind of suspicious to me. Why would all one bank be misfiring? Okay, well, there's a couple of choices. I haven't looked underneath the hood yet. So did they do just one head? Did they do both heads? Uh, did they only have to replace valves in one head? I've seen it to where they put new valves in and they don't bother adjusting the rocker arms. These have adjustable rocker arms. Um, that'll create a misfire. Uh, I have seen where some idiot will, you know, smack down the cam bolt using an impact gun and it wasn't sitting right to begin with and they, you know, whack it down and all there is is a guide or a dowel pin that holds the gear centered on the cam. So what happens is, you know, they whack it down and they could actually shear the pin. Now, yeah, it's tight, but over a period of time, the cam gear will start to rotate slightly over the camshaft itself. I've seen it. So that's I'm going to have to get into this and find out what's going on. Um, my first suspicion, since it's all one bank, is I'm going to go with, I got a funny feeling the, the, um, the dowel pin on the camshaft might have broken. Like I said, I've seen it before. So, and I, and I fixed it. On, um, the last one that I did was a Honda Ridgeline, I think. I did it about three years ago. And um, it did just that. It, it sheared it. And it, like I drove this, it actually ran okay on the road. But here at idle, when you're in gear, you can kind of feel, you can feel the motor, which on these Hondas in particular, they're pretty damn smooth. You usually don't feel the motor. Um, but this you can see it's like you know something's not right but on the road it actually feels okay but then again you know not most people don't drive foot to the floor I mean I do but most people don't um, so I'm gonna go with that the dowel pin sheared and the cam gear started to rotate the last one I had luckily it didn't ruin the camshaft I was able to get the camshaft or get the dowel pin out of the camshaft I got a new dowel pin and I got a new gear. I didn't have to replace the cam. Um, I had a Kia Soul that did the same thing and I wound up having to replace the cam gear and the cam because it just totally destroyed the cam gear, the camshaft itself. So let's uh, let's go underneath the hood and see what we got. All right, so here we go. We got the hood open and I can honestly say I'm disgusted already. And let me show you why. Now, whenever I do a job like this, you know, a head job or whatever, on. I try to make it look as good as possible, especially when I'm done. You know, clean it all up, make it look nice. Now, if you look down, let's see if I can get in there. You can just see the edge of the head gasket right down there. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it was replaced. But look at look at all the oil everywhere. Look up here. Look at all the oil everywhere. I mean, did you not use silicone the right way? Like, what happened? And they didn't clean anything off, it doesn't look like. I mean, it's dirty. I mean, right there where the uh, the head meets the the cap pipe, it's all full of oil. It's just not a, it's just not a nice job. I'm sorry, but I at least try to make it look decent, make it look like, hey, you know, this is what you paid for. You know, open up the hood and be like, okay, yeah, I can see it. No, I look under this hood and I don't see anything I mean it doesn't look like the gasket was replaced they were in there but 
All right, I'm gonna have to start taking stuff apart and see what I can figure out. All right, so I'm underneath now. Let me show you this. So you can see it. I mean, this was done less than two months ago. Why is this thing leaking oil everywhere? I mean, legit, it's leaking oil everywhere. It's all over the axle. It's all over the back of that motor mount extension. It's all over the bottom of the oil pan. I mean, seriously. Oh, and then to boot, I come to find out the same shop did the timing belt three years ago. And in three years it broke? And it's only got 121000 on it? Something don't sound right. I'd be willing to bet they charge them for a timing belt and didn't bother changing it. I don't know. I just, I, I, don't, I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like what I've been told so far. So I got a feeling we have an unscrupulous shop. But, all right, let me start taking this thing apart and see if I can't figure out exactly what's going wrong. And look at that. That's where you grab the tensioner to release the tension on the belt. They snap that off. Cool. I'll deal with that now, too. All right, so I got the upper cover off of the cam. I don't know if you could see that. Really close. You see the glitter? Look at the shiny. See that? That's metal flakes. So if something's rubbing somewhere in there, and we're going to have to dig further and find out what's going on. Because I really have no idea what's going on at this point. But that's not good. Alright, so I got the bolt out. And as you can see, the keyway that's part of the gear uh, is meshing up perfectly fine with the cam. So that's not the issue. But I still got to figure out where that metal flake is coming from. Uh, I think earlier I said that it was a pin that sheared, a dowel pin. Um, I think I might be thinking of the wrong motor. It was a... Uh, an old Honda Passport that I was thinking of. With a, I think it had the Isuzu 3.2 liter, maybe? I don't recall, but it was a pin that had sheared. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I'm, that's what I was thinking of. I knew it was Honda related, I just, you know, I thought it was one of these. Uh, but yeah, so that's looking fine. So now we gotta go a little further and figure out what's going on. All right, so I got the front cover off, and check this out. I saw all that there, and then flip it over. See all that there. It's the belt, it's the metal, and everything else. So now, where's it coming from? It's coming from right there. And I'm not sure what they did. See it all? I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to look. I'm going to investigate and find out what's going on here. Why this is like this. I'm not quite sure yet. Let me take this off and see. Oh, there's a problem already. See, it's got a bevel to it. See that? See, it's got a slight bevel to it. That helps keep the, the belt guided in place. It's kind of concave. See that? They had it on upside down. So having it on upside down was digging into the belt, which in turn was digging into probably, well actually, you know what, that metal, that metal flaking could be, I mean this may be a reinforced belt, it could just be fibers that I was seeing, it looked like metal. I actually never put a magnet to it, which I probably should have. Let's see, do I, know? I actually have a magnet right here. Let's see. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't really attract to it. A little bit, but I mean, that's... I don't even see that that's a lot. That's mostly for me just disturbing it. Alright. So, at least we found the source of the dust and everything else, but it still doesn't explain the misfire. So, but I had to go this far because I had to fix that. Because that, that was a potential failure at some point so i'm gonna have to clean all of this up and this guide piece here uh, this is actually adjustable too 
you take these nuts off, you can actually get it closer or further away from the belt. Um, it basically, it, hold, it helps hold it in place when you're trying to put a timing belt on these things. So let me uh, just go ahead and clean that up and uh, go from there. I'm just going to brake clean it. And all the timing marks were right where they're supposed to be. And it's kind of hard for me to angle the phone in there. But you can see, let me put this. I mean, the gap is pretty good all the way around, so I'm not worried about that. But I mean, definitely that, that plate was put in incorrectly. It was definitely put in upside down. Let me get a better view of the ridge on it. But yeah, that's, that would have been a problem. The crank bolt itself, too, I don't know if I mentioned it. I might have, I don't know, it's senile. The um, crank bolt was not tight. I mean, I put my gun on that thing, and usually with, these, with this setup here, you need a special tool that holds the inside there while well, you put a breaker bar to the bolt on the inside. And these things are taha height. And uh, usually you gotta use a breaker bar on a special tool and a breaker bar on the bolt to break the two free. And um, usually takes quite a bit of effort. Anyway, I just put my gun on there and just a quick prep and it came, bolt came right out. So whoever put this together didn't tighten it up correctly. So um, I think we're gonna finish with that. Yeah, I mean the day is over, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that, and uh, we'll get back on this tomorrow. Um, figure tomorrow I'll reassemble that part of it, get that all back together, and then I'm gonna wind up taking the valve cover off. None of this may be the problem at all. I don't know, but I have to check what somebody else did. I don't want to start, you know, going elsewhere, you know, and looking for problems, and it turns out the problem was there caused by somebody else. You know, the likelihood that they caused the problem is always there, so that's why I wanted to go and check that out first. So. Time belt, not the issue. I honestly thought it probably would have been, but from everything I could tell, not the issue. Uh, what I should probably do though, is I should probably take the back cam bolt out and just verify that one, just in case I've seen stranger things where, you know, it's one side that's actually the problem, but the, but the codes show up for the other side. I have seen weird things like that. So maybe I'll do that first thing in the morning, is just take that back head bolt out, or back cam bolt out, and just verify that that cam is okay. So anyway, that's about it. So if you get anything out of my videos, hit the like button. If you could, please subscribe. And uh, that's about it. Hope you guys had a great day. Keep wrenching.